Welcome to the Wear Wag Repeat Podcast. I'm Tori Mystic. As a dog mom lifestyle expert, blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. Welcome back to another solo episode of the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic of Wear Wag Repeat, and this week I am really excited to share with you some affiliate marketing strategies that are working for me right now. I have been doing affiliate marketing for years, and I've tried a lot of different things, as I typically do with just about everything. (laughs) I'm all about throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Luckily, I have Bert and Lucy by my side to lick up all the spaghetti on my wall (laughs) and kind of keep me company. Um, But on this episode, I'm going to be talking about affiliate marketing. If you have never done any kind of affiliate marketing before, or if you are really experienced in it, hopefully you can still have some takeaways from this episode no matter where you are in this journey. If you're brand new and don't know what I'm talking about, affiliate marketing is basically getting a special unique link that has tracking numbers in it, sharing it with your audience, getting them to click on that link and buy whatever product it is or service or um, technology or whatever it is that you're recommending, getting your audience to purchase using your unique tracking link and then you get a commission from the company. So it sounds pretty simple. It sounds pretty straightforward. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there who can make a ton of money. Like they can make a full-time income off of just selling affiliate links. And it seems pretty great because you're doing all the selling without having to do any of the fulfillment. But it's not always that easy. It can be really kind of difficult to get some traction and to get the ball rolling in this. So I'm hoping that my own experimentation uh, can help you out. And I'm going to share with you what I see really working today. So in this episode, I will talk to you about what types of pet businesses can actually use affiliate links, what types of things you can sell with these affiliate links, what to do if you don't qualify for the programs, because some programs will want to look at your numbers or your stats. You might not qualify. So I have some kind of workaround loophole ideas for you. And then I'll share with you the strategies that you can use that I have been using to get people to buy things using your links. And then finally, I will mention a few affiliate programs um, that you can join or kind of the platforms that you can look for that have pet products available on them. Okay? All right. So first off, who can use affiliate links? I think there is a big misconception that it's really just for bloggers or just for influencers or just for those types of people who say, here's five summer products that you need from Amazon. It doesn't have to be any of that. It can be all of that, but it doesn't have to be. Basically, if you ever get asked from people for recommendations for something, then you could have affiliate links and you could be using those to not only recommend your favorite products or services or whatever, um, but you could also be making a commission on those. So it's a great way to add an extra revenue stream to your business. There are some people, of course, like I mentioned, who are making a full-time income pretty much from affiliate links and good for them. (laughs) Hopefully one day we can all reach that level. Um, But for now, I think it's a really great additional revenue stream to kind of diversify your revenue, which I am all about. So like I said, if someone ever asks you for a recommendation for something for their pet or for their business or for their home, whatever it is that you're kind of known for as like the go-to girl for this thing, you could have affiliate links for that. So if you're an influencer or a blogger, it's a natural fit. But also if you're a dog trainer, a pet groomer, a breeder, if you run a rescue, um, you can be a pet photographer, a pet artist, pretty much anything that I can think of, (laughs) you could be an affiliate. 
And the best thing is that you don't need a huge audience. So, um, you know, I think we all see these people who have hundreds of thousands of followers and they're sharing these links and saying all these people bought through their stuff. And that's really great for them. However, you can still promote your stuff to a very small audience. You can share your links with one person, as a matter of fact, and it might make an impact for you. And I'll kind of get to that a little bit later when I talk about what um, what kind of programs and products you can sell. Um, so no matter what kind of business you have, you can definitely use these links. Um, Think about if you're a dog trainer, are people asking you all the time, what kind of leash should they use? What kind of collar should they use? What kind of treats should they buy? Uh, You could be recommending all of those different things. If you're a pet photographer or a podcaster or something like that, you could be recommending the camera you use, the microphone you use. Um, If you have a standing desk where you do all of this fabulous work that you do, you might be able to get an affiliate link for that. So the possibilities are really endless. You just have to kind of be creative. And I was actually consulting with someone in my community during a one-on-one coaching call, and they have had great success doing affiliate marketing for one particular brand, but they were looking to kind of diversify, mix it up, and add some other things because, you know, with the amount of success they've had with this one, if they could have a second one and do just as well, they would pretty much double their income. So, you know, I recommended they that they look for what kind of brands the, the customers who buy that first brand that they support, and I don't want to say what it is because I think it'll give away who it is. <laughs> but if you look at the, the people who buy that first brand, what are other brands that they support? And those would be like a really good secondary um, affiliate program to look into. I hope that makes sense. Now, talking we, now I've, I've covered kind of who can be an affiliate, but let's talk about what you can sell. I've already given you a few examples, um, like for the dog trainers with the leashes and things like that. But did you know you could also be an affiliate for pet insurance, um, pet wellness programs, the supplements that your dogs take, all kinds of pet-related services and products out there have affiliate links. But now there's also other things like online courses and memberships, or even services like your email software that you use, a lot of those things are also going to have affiliate links that you could be sharing with people. Now, I mentioned um, a few minutes ago that you don't really need a huge audience. Um, If you're selling something off of somewhere like Amazon and you want to make a lot of money off of it, you're going to need a lot of people to click on those links because Amazon has a very, very low commission rate. And they also have a lot of rules that seem to exclude a lot of sales from your commissions. So, you know, their cookie policy is something you want to look into and, um, you know, just something that Amazon does and that that most of these programs will do is kind of track and see what's the last affiliate link they clicked on. So if someone clicked on my affiliate link and then they clicked on your affiliate link afterwards and bought, you'd probably get the commission and I probably wouldn't. So that's just something that can kind of affect your numbers. And that's why if you're you're focused primarily on Amazon affiliate links, you're going to need to have higher numbers. But If you are selling a bigger ticket item, you might only need to sell one and it could kind of make your day. So for example, I am an affiliate for Marie Forleo's B-School and I get a really generous commission off of anyone who enrolls in that course. And it's really worth it to me if one person signs up, obviously I want more than one (laughs) to sign up through me. Uh, But if one person signs up, then it's really worthwhile. Uh, If there's another thing that you might love doing, like stand-up paddleboarding with your dog, well, paddleboards are kind of expensive. They can be $600 to $1,500. So if you sell one of those and you make maybe between I don't know, a 10 or 20% commission, depending on what platform you're on. Maybe it's more like 5%. 
no matter what it is, it's more worthwhile than if you're just making like pennies and quarters off of your commissions for sales. So that is something to think about. You want to look for the programs that are going to be the most lucrative for the least amount of transactions, in my opinion. Uh, If you have a huge audience and thousands of people clicking, then by all means, go for the bulk. Go for uh, quantity over quality. But if you have a smaller audience, I would look for the programs that are more lucrative because then you won't have to work as hard. And that's what I'm all about. Now, okay, what to do if you don't qualify for programs? Let's talk about this because this has definitely come up in different Wearwag Repeat community conversations. So some of these programs, they're going to require you to have a certain number of site visits or a certain number of followers or who knows what their stipulations are for how they accept people into their programs. And you just might not qualify. Well, it's not the end of the world because there are a couple of different loopholes and ideas that I think you can try out. So number one, I think you can also reach out to brands personally and ask them if they have a program. I think that most of them will be happy to welcome you because it's basically free marketing for them. If you want to, if you want to promote their products and talk about how great they are, uh, I think a lot of brands would be happy to give you a small referral fee for that, a small commission. Um, and that's going to work with some brands and, and some brands it won't. So for that, I think it would typically, typically be these smaller to medium sized brands would be able to do that because there's probably one person at the company who is running their affiliate program and they can manually add you in. If you reach out to a huge company like Target, (laughs) they're probably not going to reply to you uh, and they probably won't be able to accept you into their program. I don't even know if they have a program. That was just an example off the top of my head. So that's one idea. Um, The other thing that you can do, which is a really great loophole here, is to look for referral programs for products that you already buy and love. I know that I've been buying dog chews from farmhounds lately and that they have a referral program where anyone who um, buys or subscribes to a treat box from them or chew box from them using my link, I do get some kind of store credit. Um, and I have another similar thing with the Spotted Dog Bakery because I love her treats and her cakes. And anyone who shops using my special referral link, I get some store credit on her site. So that means that uh, every once in a while, I can go in and get a free box of really pretty treats that she makes in her store. So that's a really great thing. It's not going to make you money that you could use to pay your gas bill and your mortgage, but it could give you money that you could use to buy things that you are already buying in the first place. Did you hear the news? I created a quiz to help you find your petpreneur personality type. Answer four quick questions, and not only will you discover what type of petpreneur you are, but you'll also get a curated playlist of the Wear, Wag, Repeat podcast designed for exactly where you are in your pet business right now. From an underdog champion to a possum petfluencer or a prosperous petpreneur, each playlist includes 12 episodes from the archives. Plus, After you get your results, you'll receive a few emails from me with special advice to help you reach your pet business dreams. Take the quiz and fetch your results today at wearwagrepeat.com slash playlist quiz. So now that I've kind of covered how and what and where to set it all up, let's talk about the strategies to actually get people to buy things using your links. So I'm reading this really interesting book right now. I've been recommending it to everyone. It's called Pitch Like Hollywood. And it's so fun to read because there's all these like celebrity Hollywood stories uh, and stories about movies and actors that we all know. And so it's really fun to read. But it's very fascinating because in Hollywood, pitches are very high stakes. And, And when you're trying to get people to buy with your affiliate links, you're basically pitching them this product, even though you're not the one selling it. 
um, you're, you're trying to get them to buy it through you. So it's all pitching, right? So in this book, they talk about how in Hollywood, the writers or creators of a movie or a TV show or something, they have to pitch their idea to the producers or the big studios. They have to convince them to invest millions of dollars into their idea. And then after that, once it's all said and done and and created and edited and ready to go out, then they need to pitch that to the audiences and get them excited about watching this show or this movie or listening to this song or whatever it is. And so in this book, the authors talk about how important it is to drive emotion and pique curiosity from your audience and your customers. And that pretty much starts with having a great hook. So you might have seen people talking about this. Um, Charlotte Lehman, who hosts the Reels membership that I'm in, she's always talking about having a great hook at the beginning of your Reels videos on Instagram. And I've always known this, but reading this book really kind of hammered it in and made a lot of sense to me. Uh, And some of the examples they used were from movies and TV, so they're very dramatic. Uh, and the hook might be, what would you do if you only had one week to live? Or something like that. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not a Hollywood producer. But you can imagine, you know, the hook has to be something that really does pique your curiosity and it has some kind of emotional pull. So for us, in our context, um, I have two little examples here. The first one might be, I spent $400 on a vacuum that doesn't work. Then you could tell people about the one that you like better that actually does suck up all the dog hair around your house. So telling people, I spent $400 on a vacuum that doesn't work, or I spent $400 that I would have rather spent on dog food (laughs) on a vacuum that doesn't work. So that really does pique people's interest and be like, well, what does work? What does she like better? Um, Because the $400 price tag, maybe that kind of insinuates that it's the Dyson and you don't like the Dyson or or whatever it is. Um, You have to kind of lure people in. And then how about the second idea that I had was in one month, I made back my investment and then some, and I spent the rest of the money on a weekend getaway with my dog. Now, that's maybe not as convincing, but I think you kind of get the idea. Um, it kind of depends on what you're trying to sell. That second example was for an online course or a membership or or something like that, um, or some kind of software subscription, maybe. So I hope that gets you kind of thinking about what what you could say to lure people in from the very first sentence. Now, ultimately, you really do need to have passion and authenticity behind all of this for it to work. So you're not going to be able to sell people your favorite pet hair vacuum if you don't actually have that vacuum and know how it works and have the videos of it sucking up all of the dog hair tumbleweeds flying around your house. Not like I'm speaking from experience or anything here. (laughs) I do need the vacuum today. (laughs) But it's really important that you are authentic with what you're talking about. Because if people start buying from you through your affiliate links and they don't like the stuff, you're going to kind of ruin your trust. You're going to break the trust that you have with your audience and your customers. So it's really, really important that you are passionate and you have tried the things that you are sharing affiliate links for. Now, another strategy that I have seen a lot of success with is to add your own add-ons to an offer. So I do this for Marie Forleo's B-School. I have a couple of episodes, I think, about specifically about B-School that you can go back and listen to. But I took the example from some other like high profile affiliates that she has where they basically add on a whole other program with tons of live support and coaching and all that kind of stuff to incentivize people to sign up for B-School with their affiliate link. 
So for me, I give people all kinds of extra coaching sessions. Um, I'm available in um, DMs on Instagram. I give them access to all my courses, membership in, in Wear Rag Repeat Society. I give them everything I've got uh, to kind of convince people to sign up using my affiliate link instead of just signing up on their own. I also have an affiliate in my program, in Wear, Wag, Repeat. One of my affiliates does something similar. And um, if people sign up for one of my courses or for my membership through her, she'll give them some kind of extra coaching or social media audit or something like that. So that's something that you can do. And again, that's kind of maybe a better fit for services and programs. However, I have seen people do this with book sales, um, maybe not so much as an affiliate strategy, but if you have a book coming out <laughs> and you want to incentivize people to buy it early, I have seen people do giveaways uh, if you can prove that you bought their new book when it comes out. So there's a lot of different creative ways you can do this, not just for services and online programs, but also for products. I want to share a piece of advice that was shared in the Wear Wag Repeat Labs Facebook group. E. Stanfield, who runs Essential Pet Wellness, she shared some advice that it's really important that you know your niche audience when you're doing affiliate marketing. If you try to speak to everyone, it's like no one hears you. And that is so true. With her business, she provides essential oil kind of guidance or recommendations, I guess, to people and their pets. And with that kind of a product and that kind of service that she offers, obviously she can cover all ages and all stages of humans and pets. But for her, it's been really important to focus specifically on her niche of pets and dogs because she has had a passion for dogs for over half of her life. Is that that's what she said? Um, so it is. It really does come back to that passion and authenticity. Of course, with her business, there are people who who buy essential oils for all kinds of reasons. But she focuses specifically on dogs, and it's been really successful for her. Another recommendation I want to make in terms of strategy is to use email. I have noticed that on social media, whenever I share links, my posts don't seem to do as well. So when I share links on my Facebook groups or my Facebook page, or if my Instagram posts say, click the link in my bio, it doesn't seem to do a whole lot, to be honest with you. I have had way more success sharing affiliate links in email. And I think it's actually the best strategy when I can kind of do it all at the same time. You might have heard that old marketing philosophy that you need to share something seven times for a consumer to decide to buy something from you. But lately, with how inundated we are with messages and social media and news and all kinds of things, the experts are saying that you actually need to communicate to your audience 20 to 30 times in order for them to decide to buy from you. So that's why I think it's really important to add email into the mix. I like to talk about my affiliate products on social media. Then I like to send maybe a dedicated email blast just about that thing. And then after that, I might include it in the PS line on some other relevant emails. Uh, it's really important to kind of keep reminding people and keep telling them what you're doing. And kind of along that, along those lines... I, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but I think it's really important that we communicate to people what our affiliate links do. I think that there is just a huge misconception and lack of knowledge amongst consumers about why they should buy things through our affiliate links. I have already done some polling on with my audience over the last year or so, and... <laughs> Oh my gosh, Bert's tail is whacking on the floor behind me. And I looked, he's having a little puppy dream. Um, that's very cute. I don't know if you could hear his tail whacking, but that's what that was. Um, anyhow, I think that we need to educate consumers about what affiliate links are. I would recommend that you tell your audience time and time again that this does not cost them anything, but it means the world to you. 
that you w- might receive a small commission and might is a good word to include because sometimes, like I said, the tracking links get all messed up. So I would recommend that you always tell people that you might receive a small commission, but it costs them nothing. Uh, and I like to add in that it that it means the world to me, even though it costs them nothing, because it's true. Um, I, when I can see that people are buying through my links and they're taking my recommendations, it really is very satisfying <laughs> to know that they're taking my advice. And I, I love knowing that people are out there using the products that I love solely because I recommended them. So that's something that I would I would recommend working into your affiliate marketing strategy is telling people why you are sharing an affiliate link and kind of what it means to you. That all comes back to the purpose and authenticity kind of mission of affiliate links. All right, so the last thing that I have here for you are some places where you can look to join affiliate programs. So, of course, there is Amazon Affiliates Associates. Um, Personally, you might have seen me posting a little bit all over the place this week that I have just canceled my Amazon Prime membership. I do not feel like Amazon is in alignment with my values, and so I've decided to cancel my Amazon Prime membership. I am still active as an Amazon affiliate in their associates program or their influencer program. I'm not sure what they call me any, anymore, but I do still have an active account there. And that's because I have like 400 blog posts on my blog and a lot of them include affiliate links to Amazon. Now, I am not going to waste my time <laughs> going back and editing all of those things to change them. I'm going to take my own advice that I give to people all the time is to don't worry about what's already there. Just make a change moving forward. So I'm going to leave all my Amazon affiliate links up on my website if they're already there. But moving forward, I am going to be linking to other things. So what are those other things you might ask? You can get affiliate links through Reward Style. Um, That's a program that you do have to apply to, uh, but you can use links to all kinds of websites, hundreds or thousands of websites. Um, But a few examples would be Etsy and Chewy.com. Avant Link is the kind of platform that does the affiliate links for REI and um, Backcountry.com, I think is what it's called, and a few others. There's also a platform called Commission Junction that I think just goes by cj.com these days. Uh, And these are all kinds of different programs that you can kind of research and see if you can apply to them. And then you can apply to individual brands within there. Of course, like I mentioned way at the beginning of this conversation, is that you can reach out to individual brands and ask them if, if you can join their affiliate program as well. And their program might be run through one of these platforms. Um, There are other platforms like GoAffPro, but you can't really go on there and search for brands. You have to just join through the brand and then it happens to be hosted on that platform, if that makes sense. Uh, And of course, I also have my own affiliate program for Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs, aka that's the hub for my courses, my coaching, and my society membership. And if you're interested in becoming an affiliate for Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs, I would be more than happy to get you set up in that. Just drop me a DM or an email and I can get you all squared away. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this episode. I hope that I've kind of got you thinking. I really wanted to share this right now in the summer because it gives you an opportunity to get all of this set up going into the fall and the holidays when people are buying a lot of things, either as gifts or just for themselves. So um, we talked about what kind of pet businesses can use links, what you can use to sell or what you can sell through your affiliate links, and then some workarounds if you maybe don't qualify for some of those programs. And remember, whatever program you end up choosing, be really transparent and audience and authentic with your audience. Tell them why you're an affiliate, what it means to you when they buy things through your affiliate link, and then be creative about how you promote it. Um, Remember to have some kind of emotional hook that lures people in 
but that's still honest. Uh, and then think about, if you can, adding on some kind of incentive or add-on that gets people really excited about supporting you and actually choosing to sign up for things through your links. I hope that you got some value out of this conversation and I hope that you will come back and tune in next week where we will hear from the owner of a pet sitting and dog walking business on how building trust with her customers has enabled her to adjust her pricing to cover rising gas prices and inflation without frustrating her clients. It's a really great conversation. I'll see you back here next week. What did you like most about this episode? Find me on Instagram at teamistic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog-inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or Join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wearwagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.